character is so like unique they they truly made it so <laughs> clustered wizard <laughs> you know well we'll talk about them after we're getting into game number one here with pk chris versus jake rocking the alex versus the ness this is gonna be interesting and i'm glad to see that somebody decided not to go to battlefield for the first for the first match against jake, oh my god even though he's I was gonna, gonna town say. significantly smarter decision I was going to say, please, something aside from Battlefield. Now, I know it's like the, the number one hit wonder that you probably have been seeing all night long, but yeah, it was good to see a little bit of a refreshing stage here in Town and City. But also, it's good for a character like... It's, it's good both ways. When you think about it for Jake, right, he has space to run around, mine mm -hmm. materials, but it's also good for BK Chris because he has space to definitely avoid things from Jake and a little bit of space to move around. But also, when you remember how the character was designed on a stage like Town and City, he will be mining out more wood materials than he would metal materials. Exactly. And also another great thing for this stage that I, I know that FD seems like a weird idea to fight against this, but you see how much easier it is for PK Chris to react and deal with the minecarts. He was much closer that time, so he got caught on landing, but it's it's significantly better than dealing with a minecart that consistently comes on its way in from a certain angle. And hey, just just leave it out there. <laughs> to get a get up in front of it, just go ahead and catch that down smash at the ledge. Yeah. Oh, what a change it to to get away from the ledge. Setting up the downer that if PK Chris tried to chase with an aerial, he had to worry about Anvil, and then you get around them with the minecart too. And of course, there's a lot of crazy things we know that Jake can do with minecart. Exactly. And one of like pretty much the main way that PK Chris runs away with this W is one, running just like that from those minecarts, and two, you have to control the pace of the game. Like everything about what the Minecraft crew does is just control the tempo of the game in a way that they want. Throwing out stuff like these PK fires or PK thunders oh. at full range is how you're gonna do it. But Jake is only gonna let you get away with that for so long. Oh, run! I was gonna <laughs> okay. say that that's that's a scary situation for Jake. But I was gonna say like you said. You have to control the pace of the game, but most importantly too, you have to also look at, okay, there's a lot of things that Jake can do to call you out for projectiles like PK Fire, so you have to really watch out for that. If you get hit by minecart, that's a call out and it's a lot to do for, like so. You get that armor from the powered minecart and there's a lot of things that Jake will definitely take away from you to get him back on the stage and he sees the play right before PK Curse has the time to act and he gets the back air and PK Curse with the us and response and kind putting 1-1 one, one on stocks in game one already. So swift, good punishes. Better watch your landing here because he's definitely going to go for that. Like the, the thing with this matchup is that once Diamond Gear is online, Jake has to and has been playing like a different person except jumping directly in front of PK Thunder 2 again. I am completely for it. Sometimes you just got to let it rock quite a few times, especially at low percent and PK Chris finds game one. I'm lost for words. <laughs> I'm <laughs> lost for words. Like, I have to give PK Chris the credit. You know what? You look at where Jake was around every single time he activated PK Thunder. Happened to be around PK Chris, and not only that, but Jake as well. Because you know that Jake is always trying to get some kind of cross up back air, mm -hmm. uh, usually an up tilt, or he's moving around after minecart. So for PK Chris to kind of let Jake know, if you're going to be around me, there's a PK Thunder, but not only that, there might be your stock in game one going to me. So it's not going to be game two. Of course, PK Chris sitting on the loser's side. It's got a, Jake has a whole other set to lose, man. And I know PK Chris has been in the hot hands, man, because this man has been fighting all the way from losers. Yeah, and you know, like the crazy thing is, is that Jake is going to learn PK Chris's mix-ups as the time goes. He's not going to fall for that stuff at, like every single time, but PK Chris needs to still make those exact same mix-ups like that work because in the long run, he needs to have really early KO power on Jake because he's going to lose out to Diamond Gear every time. It kills so damn early, and the Ness hates disjoints, so he's got to yeah. get KOs like that. But, like, you can already see Jake here, instead of, like, mining a lot more, he's just boxing with him. Like, all right, I'm going to swing at you. All right, my cart get activated there, getting the good stage control here for Jake. He knows, man, I just have to play lame, win the game, 38 to 135. I get a mine cart on you or an aerial. This might be current here. Gets the upper with the diamond axe. No grab. Great opportunity on the spot. Dodge looking across up here with the minecart. I do like that from PK Curse. It still puts in the third of the PK Thunder, but unfortunately on the shield, not enough damage. And that's a quick punish there from Jake as he takes the first stock. 
that was so close too. I, I like the I really like the way Jake has changed it up this game. Like he even though he's at KO percent right now, he he's just been way more content to swing and just contest all of the jumping of Ness because that's what you gotta do. You gotta force them to get. You need to stop them from wanting to jump and swing at you so much. You also gotta stop them from grabbing you at the ledge, and that's gonna be a quick stock for PK Chris. Oh, what a great back air. Yeah, so double 43 already. Oh, he's, oh, oh, he oh, might, he's gonna okay. die. He's gonna die. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's gonna he's gonna fire. Yeah, he's, 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 dead. he's dead. He overshot the PK Thunder, and I respect it too, because he also could have hit Jake. And that looks so tempting, but unfortunately, look at the punish you just ate and the stock lead that Jake had just now has. That was beautifully executed by Jake the entire time. He caught his jump. He forced him to go high. This could be bad again. He could, he could force him to go low, but good job resetting, realizing he was going to jump early. So I figured that PK Chris might wait a second, assuming a swing. So luckily, at PK Chris, he got away. I was going to say, man, if PK Chris is going low, he had a lot of things to worry about, and it was not going to be in a good position for PK Chris. Nonetheless, Jake will come back to the stage using that minecart. Once it's, yeah, I was going to say good opportunity, but PK Cross doesn't meet the damage threshold to get rid of that. Looking for the pump. No, I was going to say, the only reason why yeah. he got that, I was smash. Yeah, he extended his hurt box yep. by the starting phase of Forest Smash. Yeah, I'm glad you saw that too, because I was about to say, the only reason he got that is because Jake decided to swing just a second too early, because, yeah, that up smash does end kind of fast, so you want to make sure you punish it. So, luckily, he's still got diamond, and he's dead at 86. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. You, you know what's crazy? Yeah, diamonds are forever, man. <laughs> they are forever, they man. Always, they will never do you wrong. The money Jake is making from Steve, man, he might as well be getting paid in diamonds. That's all I'm saying, dude, because this man is in the money for sure. Do you think that do you think that Jake just like regularly has Kanye's Diamonds Are Forever just playing as he's Oh my god. These? Like right? there's gotta be a, Or or you know what? I'll, I'll do you one better. I'll I'll do you one better. When he wins grand finals, he plays Rihanna's Shine Bright Like a Diamond. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you know for I, sure he's just popping that banger dude in the twitch chat it's or at least be, in the stream it has to be it has to be one of those two if jake ever gets ceo top eight for the walkout it has to play it has to be one of those two that he plays <laughs> man, i hate there. you man because you know you'd actually see it happen too <laughs> thanks we're just putting it out we're just putting it out there so we can say that we called it like, that early. is true man yeah that's what you have to do as a commentator man you call the commentator's curse way before it happens <laughs> I like his out of shield game right now too. He's consistently punishing PK Chris for hitting him on shield for like a solid 20 plus percent almost every time. Get to almost catch him on the landing there. And one thing he, that PK Chris hasn't been hit by yet is up smashes on landing. So he has yeah. to be super careful because I think Jake is trying to condition him to think that he can land for free. Because at some point he's ripping an up smash on his landing and it's going to force him to have to like run to the corner. It's going to make it easier to catch things like backers. Yeah, and we haven't seen that habit from PK Chris where he'll go for directional air dodge to a platform specifically because we're on town and city but like you said it doesn't necessarily mean we can't throw away pk chris's landing habits and jake is definitely has an eye on that especially when he was sitting from winter side you have a lot of matches you can watch that's going to be a fourth throw that throw is such a rough one in the angle too if your character is not if you're a little mag you're dead if you're any other yeah, character yeah. like ness you're okay if you have, oh, oh yeah, that's, oh, he's so lucky he just missed his timing. He went out there to go catch that. Well, that's the reason why that's stressful on that board, though. And that is also another reason why Minecart is ridiculous. Is it, it, it's Ajax time of the week to complain about Minecart. Somebody somewhere got paid to approve a projectile command grab that also kills on contact and also sets up for KO options. I don't know who did it, but that move is one of the best moves in the game. And Jake, Jake needs to abuse it as he always does, but I hate that move. I feel like Minecart is what makes the... Uh, like, Diamond is already strong enough. Diamond is Steve's arson, but Minecart is literally like Wonder Wing and Bowser Jr. a Koopa Kart on steroids. It is literally, that's what it is. If Wonder Wing had a command grab for some forgiven reason, it, that's what it would be. And it's already ridiculously good as it is. Oh my, it's so it's so good and like, and like it, it, it makes it like pk chris was doing a, such a good job at the beginning of jumping around and navigating around it but it's such a good burst option tool that you can only like avoid it for so long and jake just mixes it up Back oh, throw? Yeah, no <laughs> this man got yeeted i'm sorry that's that's the hospital stretcher all the way to the blast zone and it was and jake was sitting there for it that's that, it, like, everything unfortunate you'd ever want to happen in one situation. He was looking for back air pressure. The, plat the platform just backed up for him. And now Jake has a lead until it got destroyed just now by a forward smash. And, like, uh, it, it also another thing Jake does really well, too. He always makes sure, 
always make sure that he has a diamond on deck for the next stock. So he's yeah. essentially starting the next stock up like four tiers as a character. That's how you know, man. You paid four ninety nine for that DLC, man. When you can start <laughs> next stock four tiers above your opponent, that's incredible. Oh, ooh, ooh. Gets a drag down. Gonna go for the high recovery, but Minecart says absolutely not. Get the hell out of my face. <sighs> the cross-up on the back air, too, with Minecart. That's the crazy thing about Minecart, man. It's it's a great cross-up tool. It's a great tool to get back towards center stage. It's, it's honestly one of the best options to let forces in the game, too. Jake is just sitting pretty on that 153, looking at PK Chris. Like, this stock is mine one way or another. And Jake has also just established so much fear in PK Chris to go for his air dodges. Yo! A mental awareness. God, he knew that he was gonna possibly get clanked on from that side B. So what does he do immediately? Throws out down air. If, if PK Chris didn't do that, you know what happens? He jumps in the minecart. The option coverage there, outside of just rolling onto stage, which is still scary because you might roll into a forward smash. Beautifully played by Jake there. I wish y'all could have seen my face, man. I'm sorry. That that. Whatever reaction I'm having, the chat is speaking it for me. <laughs> like, I, I need, like, if you're struggling against Minecraft Steve, the Minecraft crew as a whole, think about how terribly stressful that situation is and practice how to deal with that situation as much as possible because that is such a godlike edge trap tool. I don't know how you just assume I can roll here because he's got KOs for days off of his hitboxes and then you jump directly into all of that, even with the projectile in the way. The hardest part about Steve as a whole too, is like if you try to juggle him in the air, he has Anvil to force you to stop juggling him and consider his landing. And if you try to side, if you try to get him from the side blast zones, he's got minecart to escape him. So the only way that you have to literally effectively get him off the stage and take a stock at times is just try to dunk him. And even then, trying to dunk Steve is already as hard as possible. Because you know this man has tools to avoid every situation like that. Max, he can star off stage. Don't ever try to punish that down to grounded up B. They get yeah, very don't. quick. Wait, always wait for the swing or the reaction first. See yeah. how they behave out of that up B. And there's that. What did I say last game? He was conditioning him into a position where he felt comfortable landing with aerials over and over again. Game number three, he rips the up smash, and that's already a first stop. Yeah, it, it's it's the way that you can also condition opponents with Steve too. Like you just have to start respecting minecart. Because if you look at PK Chris being in the air for an aerial, he's either getting hit by minecart <laughs> like that, or he is getting hit by an what by an die? aerial. When did that he is... die? I'm looking back. I'm looking back. He got hit back. This at chat. When did he, he died die? Chat. When did he die? He died at 62. 62. That, Jesus that Christ. All right, so this is this is where things are really bad. Remember what I said in the last set with Suarez, with the, staring down a Yoshi, he he was you're basically playing in the Steve's wheelhouse in the same way. Or excuse me, Alex, right now, Alex just can manipulate every approach you make. PK Chris has to get a sauce stock. He has to style, but he's not gonna be able to because he's getting pressured so much right no, now. That's just kill no, 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 no. Oh my God. You said this man needed a sauce stock? I'm sorry to tell you, Ajax. The sauce has expired and Alex just tossed it out the window because it is no Love longer spaghetti good. It's all over the floor right now. That was a well-played set by Jake. Uh, it <laughs> just keeps doing it. Honestly, if anybody wanted to question Jake's like validity and the, those performances from the weeks before, toss that, toss that shit in the trash. Jake is playing so well, so consistently.